Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, I'm going to present six signs that you're not a serious lifter. Before I get into this topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. If you need coaching, I'd love to work with you. Check out the link down below. And don't forget, every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, I do Massive Iron Live and answer your questions. Please tune in. All right. Six signs you're not a serious lifter. Let's dive in. And if things seem broken in your world where you're not making gains, Odds are it's one of these points. All right, number one, you're not a serious lifter if you don't log your workouts. Failure to track your workouts is a fast track to slow results. Tracking allows you to know exactly what you did last time, and it sets a goal for this exercise, for this set, for this workout. You know exactly what you need to beat. You know exactly where you need to improve upon. Guessing is a fool's game that yields a fool's physique. I literally have no idea why someone wouldn't track their workouts or why someone gets so lazy that they think the numbers don't matter. Progressive overload is key. We all know this. The drum has been beaten. The horse has been, the horse has been beaten to death. We're over it. We understand. We know. There's no reason not to track your workouts. You're just being lazy. And honestly, it's a reflection that you truly do not give a shit about your results. You can at least take a little pen and paper into the gym and write down your weights and write down your reps. It's not that hard. And if that's too much of a struggle for you, maybe consider getting one of 50 thousand training apps where you can log your workouts. And if that's too complicated, your phone has a notes section. Seriously, if you don't go into the gym with the passion to, to beat what you did last time, to improve upon what you did last time, you have no hope of building muscle. Progressive overload is all about staying on, in that lane and improving upon what you did last time. And honestly, if you really don't know, you if you really don't give a shit, you have no business thinking you're going to build a better body. All right, number two, you have no idea about new nutrition. You have no idea where your calories are, no idea where your protein intake is. You don't even know the rough ballpark. You just kind of are wishing to the nutrition genie or the main gaining genie or the tame gaining genie or the gain taming genie or, or whatever is going on that you're just going to kind of eat ish. You're just going to kind of eat healthy ish and you're just going to grow. You have no idea where anything is. Monitoring calories and look, monitoring calories and protein is not a complicated process. You have no excuse. One of my least favorite excuses of all the excuses in the lifting world is go something like this. Cal tracking calories is so difficult. Tracking protein is so difficult. It's not like we have the modern technology of a food tracking app that has scanners that can actually scan food for you, right? Wow, imagine if we had something like that. Wouldn't it be game-changing? Imagine if you went into the store and it had like nutrition labels on the food where you didn't even have to think, where it just had numbers of calories and protein. Imagine a world like that where you could just go into a store and it had the nutrition facts on what you ate and you could log them into an app. Imagine that or imagine just a scanner that scanned it for you, right? Those of you that make excuses that tracking is too difficult, it just goes hand in hand with the previous point. You're, you're way too lazy and you have no business expecting quality results. Precision, building a precision body requires some degree of precision when it comes to nutrition.
No, you don't have to weigh your food, but you do need to know about where your calories and protein are at so the scale is moving in the right direction. All right, and that brings us to point number three. You have no idea where your weight is. You never weigh or you don't care. You don't know where your body weight is trending. You're not bulking. You're not cutting. You're not fulking, fat bulking. You're not doing anything. You just kind of don't give a damn. Assuming your body weight is headed in the right direction or that you'll easily grow without any monitoring or direction is lunacy. You need to pick a target weight. You need to dial in your calories and you need to monitor your weight. If your weight is not trending at the rate you want, how can you expect to build muscle? My clients, we aim for about a 10 pound weight gain and then we do a reassessment. How fast you gain that weight is up to you. Maybe three months, maybe four months, maybe five months, but at least you have a plan. This simple practice facilitates growth and it's really as simple as this. If you don't have a target bulk weight, if you don't have a target rate of weight gain, you're just dicking around. You're just going to the gym, lifting weights, putting food in your pie hole, and wishing to the magic weight gain genie, wishing to the magic muscle building genie that everything's just going to fall in place because I believe everything is okay. Again, just like the last point, it's not that complicated to get your big fat ass on the scale. There's a scale in your bathroom. After you get up and go pee wee, you can move over one foot to the right and step on the scale and write it into something compli one of these complicated track weight tracking apps. It's really that simple. You have no excuse not to track your weight. If you really cannot manage to step on the scale a couple times a week and make sure your weight is headed in the right direction, you have no business wishing for quality results. All right, point number four, you assume your form is great. Look, I keep my beak out of everyone's business on social media, but as I'm scrolling through Instagram, the number of mediocre form videos I see on deadlifts and squats is, I don't know, pretty, pretty shocking. Now, I don't go out of my way to critique anybody's form. I don't do unsolicited, you know, form checks. If folks want to believe that their deadlifts and squats and other lifts are, are uh, you know, on point, that's their business. But let me tell you, when you aren't nailing your squats, when you aren't nailing your deadlifts, and for that matter, when you aren't nailing your lat pull downs or curls or seated cable rows, you're not going to get the most out of these lifts. And I'll tell you, at least 50% of the lifts I see on social media are lacking. Now, it's easy to assume that your lat pull down, that the lat pull down is an easy exercise, or that the seated cable row is an easy exercise and that you have everything nailed. But I'm telling you, nothing is further from the truth. I look at videos on social media of people doing lat pull downs and it looks like they're having a seizure, right? It looks like they're trying to set a land speed record. Like they get bonus points for how fast they're, they're knocking out the lifts. There's no control. There's no focus. There's no solid amount of tension. There's just random, random crap happening that's moving weight through space. You have to have a reasonable degree of focus. We don't need to turn form into some into some rocket science, right? Into some rocket surgery. But you do need some basic understanding of form. It's as simple as like this on a lat pull down. Control the weight up, drive the elbows down. Control the weight up, drive the elbows down. On seated cable rows, the same thing. Control the weight to, on the eccentric, drive the weight back. And it's not like some random, let's see how fast we can get to 10 reps. Pretty much the same thing on curls. You start with your elbows at your side and you curl. You start the curling motion with your elbows drilled at your side. And then as you curl up, you can allow for a little bit of elbow rotation to get a good contraction. Knowing that your form is improving is important. There are so many resources on the internet, you have no excuse. Imagine a world, imagine a world filled with endless form videos, filled with endless form articles where you can research in your free time how to improve your form. Imagine that world. Guess what? That world exists. 
you have no reason to comb through, to not comb through the 30 exercises you do each week and try to improve your form. Because if you do not work on your form, you are leaving gains on the table. And so many of us are not working on our squat form. We're not working on our deadlift form. We're not working on our lat pull down form. And we go into the gym and we get shit results, shit results, and we can't figure out why. We're doing the right program. We have a little bit of progression. Maybe we're even nailing our nutrition, but we have a blind spot, and that is our form is shit tastic. Our form is crap tastic. You need to work on it. You need to make sure you're getting everything you can out of every rep because when you get everything out of every rep, you're getting everything out of every set and you're maximizing your workouts and you're maximizing your results. And that is a pillar of success in the massive iron world. On the other hand, if you go in the gym like a bumbling, stumbling fool who has no fucking idea what good form is, and you expect the magic form fairy to bless you with gains, you're smoking crack, my friend. All right, number five, we're going to walk into the gym with no progression scheme, no progression approach. We have no defined progression target. We're just going to kind of go in and maybe add weight today and maybe not add weight today and maybe just see how things feel and maybe add weight today. Progressive overload fuels, well, progress. Imagine that. Imagine if the word progression included the word progress, right? You can't expect to hold steady and grow. You need to enter each exercise with a defined progression approach. Every exercise, every single day of your training needs a defined progression approach. There is no excuse. There is no reason not to have a defined progression approach for every exercise. If you do not have a defined progression approach for every exercise, you are fucking off. You are not training, you are fucking off. You are not muscle building, you are fucking off. You need a defined progression approach. Some sort of a trigger that says, hey, Bob, hey, Sue, when you get to a certain number or a certain trigger, you add weight. And when you get to that trigger, you better be damn adding that weight because that's how progressive overload works. You don't just add weight when you feel like it. I don't feel like following my progression approach. I don't even feel like moving up weight today because it feels heavy. Progressive overload and muscle building has no place for your fucking feelings. So get over yourself, get a progression approach, follow it and attack. All right, finally, point number six, magic program hopping. Now you don't have points number one through five in place. Your nutrition sucks. You're not monitoring your workouts. You don't have a progressive overload scheme. Everything's just broken down. Your form sucks. But despite all this, with this colossal mess in place, you just continue to believe that if you just find the right program, things will change. Wrong. You can program hop all you want, but until you clean up this mess, the mess found in points number one through five, nothing is going to change. People that program hop are kind of looking for shortcuts or magic or some kind of a magic way to short circuit the the process and build some kind of a new path forward. Odds are, if your results are not there, it's something found in points one through five or just your lack of consistency. And we didn't even touch upon consistency because it's such a no brainer. I got news for you guys that are program hopping and here it is. And I want you to remember this and I want you to never forget it. It's top secret information. It's top secret information. Open your ears, open those ears nice and wide. Open them, open them up right now because what I'm about to tell you is one of the most important points you'll ever hear in lifting. Every program, all 510 that you just hopped in the past year, they contain the same fucking exercises, friendo. They contain the same fucking exercises. 
they're just the same exercises pieced together in different ways. They each have a progressive overload uh, plan. They each require you to uh, have some kind of a bulking or weight gain plan. They each require you to use solid form. Friendo, they just are the same fucking exercises sliced and diced in different ways. So it's like taking the same five recipe ingredients and making 10 different recipes. You're eating the same thing. You still are doing the same damn exercises. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.